Greetings everyone, this is Non-Expert here and today we are going to be talking about the adaptive pattern. The adaptive pattern comes from the structural pattern classification and the intent behind an adaptive pattern is it allows objects with incompatible interfaces to collaborate with one another. Let's look at a problem statement to understand why an adaptive pattern is actually very useful. So imagine that you're trying to create a stock market monitoring application. And the way this application works is that it collects data from various different sources. The data that we're getting from these sources is basically supplied to us in a CSV format. And what we want to do is we want to integrate a third party analytics library as it has some sort of visualization tools or ML support that we would need later on. But there's a catch. The analytics library that we want to integrate into our system only works with data in a JSON format. So we have data which is already in a CSV format and what we want to do is we want to convert it into a JSON format. Essentially what we want is a transformer or an adapter pattern. The adapter in an adapter pattern is basically a special object that converts the interface of one object so that another object can understand it. The term adapter itself sort of comes from the appliance adapter that we use in our day-to-day -day lives. Whenever you move to a different area, what you notice is that you will need an adapter which can be compliant with the um, electrical ports so that your electrical appliances can actually be charged accordingly. The way it works is that you have an adapter, you plug in your um, charging services or your charger or whatever have you and you plug it into the port. Essentially the adapter is doing nothing more than being a middleware for you and updating the output in such a way that's compatible with the electrical ports that we have. The adapter pattern also works in a very similar way. You're basically transforming the output in such a way that's understandable by whatever service is actually consuming it. The implementation of an adapter pattern actually varies a lot and there's no any strict rule around this and most people just usually make a function out of it and just go from there. And that's also fine. However, what we should be careful of is state management and try to see if the application would be more dynamic or would need to scale out later. So let's take an example of the problem statement that we have so far. So let's say that we have several classes that we've already integrated and implemented into our system. We have a class called source1 and source2, which are basically um, following a structure which is defined by the base source. So we know for a fact that both these classes or the objects of these classes will always have a get data function in them. So what we want to do is we want the CSV format data that we have over here and do note over here that this is just nothing more than a string so far. What we want to do is we want to convert it into something that's understandable by a library. And let's just go ahead and define one of our libraries so far. So let's say that the library that we're integrating with basically gives us this information where it's expecting a dict and what we want to do is we want to call this display data which is basically coming from the library itself so that we can display things in a proper fashion. Now all we want to do is basically parse data in such a way so that it's understandable by the third party library that we're integrating. And the only thing for us for now is that the display data function is something that's something like a black box for us. But we know for a fact that if we perform or rather give it an input of a JSON, it's mostly going to work. So let's take an example over here. So if we go ahead and run this display data with sample data, what we essentially see is nothing more than a bar plot. And the way it sort of works is it's just using the value that you supply to the uh, sample data as your y-axis and your x-axis is nothing more than the category or the key value that you supplied over here. For our case, we're just going to define this as the ticker. Now do note that this is a really common JSON format which is mostly followed. However, there are certain things that we need to be aware of. But whenever we're sort of moving ahead with certain problems where we're transforming data into different places, we basically integrate or implement an adaptive pattern. Now, there are various ways to go about solving this problem and you can basically just make a simple function and just go from there. However, for the sake of um, using a more object-oriented programming approach, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build out a class called adapter and then work from there. The reason why an object-oriented programming approach might be useful for you as well is because it sort of allows you or gives you a better way of actually handling your state as you're moving along. One other thing that I'm going to make sure is I'm going to make sure I'm going to be 
importing or including this collections library um this is a very common python library and if you're not aware of it i would recommend that you go through with it however it sort of enables me to be a little bit more faster and my code to be a little bit more concise so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the default dict from this collection library because the expectation over here is that the json which is supposed to be or the dictionary which is supposed to be supplied to the display data has a key which is a string and the value which is nothing more than a list of numbers so we're going to update it accordingly so let's go ahead and start with creating our class called adapter and over here what i'm going to do is i'm going to add another argument inside my constructor which is basically going to be the adapter now what the expectation over here is is that the adapter class whenever it is initiated and whenever you create an object out of it um you have to supply it with the source so that it can just update the source accordingly you could make this a list as well and sort of go from there but just for the sake of just coding this out for now i'm just going to make it something straightforward so all we're doing is we're just expecting an adaptive function and just going from there now that we have this in our state or we have this as our variable whenever a get data function is called in our function what i'm going to do is i'm going to update this source or rather the data which is being supplied into the adaptive into such a way that it's understandable by the display data. So the way to go about this is I'm just going to instantiate a variable and I'm going to call it data to transform. And essentially what it's going to do is it's basically going to get data from the um, adaptive function that or the adaptive object that we passed in. Once we have the data in, what we want to do is we want to transform it into a result which can be supplied accordingly. Over here, I'm just going to use a default dict and provide it with a return value of result over here. And the way it's sort of going to work is the key is always going to be a string and the value is going to be a list as specified over here. Now, if you remember correctly that the data that was being supplied was something like this. Now, the way it sort of works is that it's being delimited by a comma and for each next line or each entry, you have a next line which is coming in. The way I'm going to find that is just by splitting it across by the um, slash n function and just go from there. So we have data to transform and we're just going to use that and essentially just split it out based on the new line. Also I'm just going to add in a small base condition just to make sure that whatever that we have so far does not really like hinder our progress. So if we strip out all the white spaces and basically we have a line which is nothing more than a string so far and we strip it out with any of the white spaces and if nothing exists over there what we're going to do is we're just going to continue and move forward. The next part is actually the main part where we're going to like segregate it out into a ticker and a value and just split out the line that we have so far. This is basically just so that we have some information in and we can move forward with our implementation. Now, this data transform logic actually in itself does not really matter that much. But what I'm trying to point out over here is that with the, with the use of a class and with the use of using the adapter pattern, what I'm doing is I'm basically converting this data so it's an understandable by a lot of other places. Now, this is a very common practice and most people actually use this a lot without even realizing it. Um, but let's just go ahead and try to test this out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an object out of this adapter class. And I'm also going to supply it with a source. So I'm just going to call source2 over here, which has some data inside of it. And essentially what I'm going to do is whenever we call display data or the display data library, um, essentially I'm just going to pass in the required get data or the transform data that we have, which is basically a JSON, which should be understandable by our library. So everything looks good over here. Let's just go ahead and try to run this out. I do see some errors and I, it sort of makes sense as I missed this particular case where we have this int value and there we go. So essentially I've just made sure that it's being converted into something which is understandable to our display data. Now, obviously like there's multiple ways to go about this and a function would have done just fine. But what I'm trying to point out is, is that a transformation service which is compatible not with different sort of sources as well. Now, you could also build it out in such a way that it's working as a factory and the factory in itself is actually converting the data for us so that we don't really have to worry about too many things. That would actually make it a factory adapter in a sense, 
However, you could sort of segregate that logic out a little bit more as well. Now that we have this implemented, let's go take a moment and understand the advantages of this particular thing. Now, the very reason why an adapter principle is actually followed a lot is because it follows the single responsibility principle. You have something which is working as a separate interface and your primary business logic of the program is not changing that much. The data conversion portion is now being handled by some other service or another class. So you don't really mitigate or you know have to mitigate through any other services as you know for a fact that the only thing that you're introducing to the system is nothing more than a transformer. Additionally, it also follows the open close principle which means that you can introduce new types of adapters into the program without breaking the existing client code. And the way it would sort of work is by actually introducing some small logic of adding um, different sort of adapters based on different sort of sources. Or if we have display data, which is coming from one library and display data, which is coming from another library, we could just add an adapter for that library, which could handle the services accordingly. The only disadvantage of actually using an adapter pattern is just that there's more code to maintain and um, although it, if coded correctly, it's not really that big of a headache, this is something that we should be wary of. And that's it. I'm sure that you've already used an adapter pattern in your day-to-day -day jobs. However, I wanted to mention this just so that everyone is clear on what an adapter pattern is.